So what does it mean, what Paco just said there, I am the bridge between the tradition and the modernity. What does it mean that? This is a very deep thing. Paco just said there's something ultra juicy, because if you understand really his heart, what he's saying, this is very deep knowledge. And you can you can take from it so much value. Because a bridge is something which transports you from one point, from point A to point B. It is not a fixed thing. So what he said, I am the bridge between the tradition and the modern flamenco. Which means that it will be necessary to study thoroughly very uh, all over his style, his technique, and his way of composing. His, of course, his works, not that you need to play every piece of Paco, but you need to really know him. One may not play every piece of his music. It's not even necessary. He many times told me this albums, old albums like that, forget about this, this is not good. That is Sabika, it's not me. In fact, he will say in this series, which uh, a friend suggested me to, to say something about, because I have some realization about Paco de Lucia, and I know him from 20 years since I was 8 years old, and, and I was lucky to, to be with him so many times. I can say what I realized through him about the guitar, and because when I was young I was fanatic of following him. Uh, it is my personal decision, of course, now I also teach others about this, but Yes, I do have something to say, and here it is, because I was saying I am the bridge between the tradition and the modernity, meaning you need to study very carefully what is his style. In fact, nowadays, which he will also say in this series, dedicated to Paco, it's a great interview, and he will say there is no, no, no originality also. Now, I don't see any original things. Now. And it's why? Because of lack of knowledge of his work. When he he'd say, well, of course, he could evolve and innovate from Sabika's point, because there are three points there of evolution, which is from Montoya, long time ago, and Sabika's around the 50s, like that, and then Paco. And when Paco did this evolution, even in San Flamenco, which soon was very uh, short size for his capacity, Chi Korea said, well, you cannot engage Paco de Lucia into flamenco, he's bigger than that. Chi Korea said that in his, uh, in the last documentary, his son made, we can watch that as well. But the thing is that Paco created this evolution from Sabicas, but first knowing everything of what Sabicas was doing, his style, his accents, how, what was his harmony, his, everything. Of course, he never followed his technique because it was very defective, you know, the picado like this and all that. 
but he reinvented flamenco guitar based on first when he evolved from that point, he first knew all what Ricardo, Javicas and others, all his predecessors did before. This is the, the, the right hand, what Paco said, I have one hand in the tradition, and with the other hand, I am searching always the, the innovation. Uh, so if, if we also, as, as, as players nowadays, and you can see it in everyone, what he you will also say that it was through his fame and through his international prestige that other players, he opened the door for anyone else who is now, like Vicente Amigo, Tony Ray, anyone who is there out playing their stuff. It's because Paco opened that door. Because before this compositional thing, which he will also say there, it was forbidden to compose in flamenco. That's how much outrageously awkward and ignorant was that environment there, of which he has to, to do away with that in order to be who he was, a real innovator and a genius of the guitar. Of course, the tool in this time he came as a flamenco player, and being so, if we don't know very carefully, because any players which are nowadays, they don't know Paco. This is a problem. That's why this bridge is not being real. They are not going anywhere, practically speaking. Because if you see in Solea, for instance, one day Paco told me, you know, even if I just the real path is to explore the compositional side of flamenco, but through the improvisational venue, only only through that you can do. If you don't do that, then you will be in trouble. And even he said. And very seriously, and he was alone with me, so not, nobody was listening also. That means he was not compromising anything to make pleasant words for others. But he said, if I try to, to, to do a falsetta in Soleá or anything now, and don't repeat myself of what I did before, I will be in big trouble. How to speak of you or others? And he of course, he said names, but <laughs> out of politeness I will not say it. But Practically speaking, means everyone who is not. Why? Because even he was strong. He did so much work. The, just the very first falsetta of the track two of, of Lucia album, Villa Vieja, this thing here, no? this thing here has just that falsetta. And the other day we counted with, with a friend, Tony, who was doing a, a research, and I think it's a thesis or some serious paper about Paco's innovation. And, I counted like 30 something new things just in one facet, and the very first facet. So, for him to, to not repeat himself, it was extremely difficult, or don't do something that he did before. So, what to speak of us if we don't, don't have even that knowledge? Therefore, that's why he says the bridge, because one needs to study in order to, if you want to be a flamenco player, in that side of the bridge, you will need to know very well what Paco de Lucia is, very, very well. And once you know that, then you can become a composer. And nobody's doing this now. I did, but any other people don't, don't follow it. They try to do their own thing, and then what happens? At the end, they will uh, finish doing the copy of the copy of the copy of something which they don't even know is a copy because <laughs> they are so much into the ego that, yeah, I did it, but partly because of ignorance, of not having the enough knowledge in music, in the musical field and in musical forms to analyze what composition is. They know no, none of them have studied composition, first of all, and, and none of them are really flamenco players able to match with Paco, you know. So the fourth, he said, this, I am the bridge, which means if you want to go to the other side, you have to pass through me. So through Paco means that you have to pass through these uh, works and the artists and what he did and his aesthetics and this, uh, understood all these things very clearly. Otherwise, there is no bridge. You will not fly from the point point A tradition to the to the to the modern day, right? So th this means we need to know very clearly what he did. For instance, this person that. Ask me those, those classes, and, and we analyze only things written, and that and came up that it has 30 innovations. This first falsetto of the Soleil, the track number two of, of Lucia Album. 
So if that is, if you don't know that, and now you want to compose Solea, and nobody nowadays in Spain knows it this way, I will actually soon <laughs> make another video specific for that to prove to the world what this personality did actually. So it's an amazing things never done before. And although un unless one studies this, one cannot imitate him. He will also say this says nobody uh, could compose and also I, I never went to the school. I don't know even the name of the chords or of the scales. So but if you yeah but that's him only one in a million. If we try to imitate this and don't study, this is very bad idea. Which is what the flamencos told me when I was a child and my father brought me there with Paco and said, Tell the child, tell Paco what is telling you players around the these flamenco people. They said they say that I should not study because you didn't study and Paco said, What are you saying? This is I didn't study because I didn't have money to go to the school. But this is a big mistake. Don't do that. Knowledge is not against flamenco art and, and, the, and the, the essence of flamenco, the essence of flamenco is not against this knowledge. Now people are it's shameless enough to say, well, well, you know what, you should not study, one do, do, doesn't need to count or to study rhythm, just do whatever, and, and then you are, you are okay. But only a fool will believe it's such a statement because they, they have no proof that this is so. Uh, in the other hand, I do have the proof. And I will write this because it's very specific, but in one falsetta, 30 things. So, just like that, this is just to give you one example out of many things which are uh, all to be seen on the, on the, when he appears, the real Paco de Lucia, because of course, also in that same interview, <laughs> I'm seemingly saying on the interview one video, but it's not, because every point has something which I want you to, to catch, because I was requested to, to explain a bit about it. Otherwise, you just see it and then swallow it like, like popcorn and don't get anything about it. But it says Paco is saying, I am the bridge between the old and the new thing and the future. So, if there is to go to be future, they have to pass through him, which means what? It doesn't mean to play two falsettas like everybody. Yeah, of course, Vicente or anyone, whoever is there out, they know a bit of Paco also. They may be inspired because of him or anything, but I'm not saying that. I'm saying, know through, go through this bridge means that you really know. Right? And not even technically speaking, there is not one person in Spain that plays his technique. I proved it in another video, which was an exam of Picard, like many people doing this bending here, right? Which he never did, the posture, etc. I will post it in the description of the first video, you can see it there. And there I quoted everyone from all levels, many countries, etc., including all the stars of Spain nowadays, the so called composers, etc. None of them, one of them, had Paco's technique, not the ability, I mean the posture, how he played the Picado. For instance, I did just over this one example of not bending, etc., these things which he taught me. Uh, and he was right, also technically, because guitar has evolved a lot, and then unless you know technique, uh, really speaking, this technique, his technique, is best technique. That's all. Then, of course, others come and say, well, because they feel actually inferior, that they don't have this technique, and then they would say, well, you know, everyone has his own thing. Yeah, that you say, well, to, to cover face, or to save face, because, really speaking, that's not true. When you will see how effective is, first of all, this, but like this. Let's go four. The exhaust, the finger down, the exhaust. These things here yeah, did not exist in Sabika's time. So he made the evolution so much. Number five, same thing. The ring finger down, the exhaust. But all this stuff, which now is applied, or everyone playing with the leg cross in horizontal position and negra, and they, they, well, of course, that's not being based in Paco, that is, that is that he created such a big influence, also bringing the cajon, the caja, as a percussion to a company, because he never liked drums, I don't know why he said these drums and nylon thing I don't like, so he discovered that and then implemented even different instruments, all of this what he did, and when and how, and you'll be able to understand that this is knowing Paco, Otherwise, if we play some pieces written in books by, for tourists, made for tourists, 
and we play like or we play and or we play like his stuff like classic music that you know people that plays the Picado like Xavikas and his Paco's music. This is not known in Paco either because that is like using a Ferrari with the wheels of a Volkswagen or with the steer the steer of a Volkswagen. That is not a good idea to put that in the Ferrari. The Ferrari has its own steer, its own wheels. <laughs> so, so then therefore that's Paco being the Ferrari is Paco, right? So technically speaking also that we also need to inquire. Not that we need to play like him. Listen, this is what I'm saying. For example, this researcher, Anthony, I cannot pronounce, pronounce his, his uh, second name. Philip said, no, Philip said, no. It's some, some like Polish name or Irish name. But he's a researcher, and actually, I don't know, maybe he plays very well, but I haven't seen him play, but I know he's a, re a scholar, a researcher of my university, you know, PhD level and that. And he's writing this paper, probably even. These people will write books, of course, about Paco's contribution, but this is all people who study it all the academia way and who have the, the, the enough information to understand these things uh, at the historical level, compositionally, etc. So all that, this is the bridge. This is all this, what I'm saying. It sounds easy, but <laughs> there, is, there is analysis involved of his work. There is the analysis of his technique involved. Not that you have to play the same, but that you have to know what he did. Right? Because I'm not saying also that the only flamenco will come will have someone that plays faster than Paco or anything. I'm not saying that. That would be a very nonsensical <laughs> remark. I am saying that, that you have, because he himself said <laughs> that I am the bridge. So it means if you want to go to point B, you have to pass through that technically, compositionally, harmonically. And this area you will see also, he said that, that I have my own way to see harmony because I remember one day I was at his place and he said, who was reading uh, a guitar review magazine uh, <laughs> in English, an article or something there, because there was an article, very nice article of Scott Henderson, I remember, and then someone was making the food like that, but then he, I, he was, I see he was reading that shit, and then all of a sudden he said, what is this? Ruben, he asked me, and it says something like, like uh, in minor, uh, with ninth and then on the second, uh, first inversion uh, with, with major nine, like that. It was something complexly written in a, <laughs> in a ner nerdy way. And Paco said, what is this? And, and I said, that, that, that is, that. they said, this chord is this. And then and he said, oh, that, that, I, I know, that, I, know that, I know what this is. <laughs> because by ear, he could identify, so immediately he would, he would try to, to search the scales which he can use over the chord by ear, right? So this, this, this kind of process of very intuitive compositional style, etc., also gave him very original ways to link chords, etc. Uh, for him it was an advantage, but how? This also we have to study a bit. We cannot say, well, I don't care what he did, everyone has his own thing. No, because that's not knowing the bridge. That is, then you are not crossing the bridge. You are staying actually, which is what I proved in that video of technique, of the Picado problem, that nobody is, is, do, does, do, plays his technique nowadays. Why? Because they are doing their own thing. And just like, like the maestro who is, uh, you know, the best trumpet player, Nowadays, he was a disciple of Miles Davis, actually. And I will also post the description, this is the second link. He said, uh, you cannot invent another abecedario if you try to add more things there. There's no meaning. You, you have to, to, to express yourself with this abecedario. Don't start with this. I do, I do my own thing to go away from knowing what the predecessors did. This in science is also not done that. The guy who did something further than penicillin, of penicillin, he also knew what the other guy did before, of course. They have to know it. If you want to, to make evolution of a telephone, of a cell phone or something, you need to know this is the past model, this is the future. Right? You have to know what was done before. You cannot do the same and then believe, well, this is my own stuff. You know? No, you have to objectively, this is another problem with lack of, 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 of objectivity. And in this art, of course, it's not like chess, you know. That, that in chess to be seated with an with a international master or anything, you have to have the rating that matches with that. 
you cannot say, well, I think, I, I guess I, I played well. No, you have to have that, that much rating, and then you can sit in that chair. That is very clear who is qualified, who is not qualified. In flamenco, especially, in music a lot, but in flamenco, <laughs> we are champions at, champions at this. We lose objectivity immediately, and then not, and also don't know really what is the, what's happening due to prejudice and ignorance, ignorance of the facts of what, what it is really happening. Because Paco did this, this work, actually, you know, you know, that's the reason why he associated with all these great players, jazz players. But he never tried to, to make jazz out of this scene music, which he will also say is, is the same. But, but because this is the bridge, unless we know that, we will remain stuck in the past, which is what is happening. I hope it will not. I'm not happy that this is true. This. It's actually a very sad thing, but hopefully, well, of course, people like Paco, it's not, they, they are not coming to this world every five minutes, maybe, I don't know, one in a hundred years. So it will come, the moment, but I think that what I, is, is still really alarming is that everyone has not, a, all these so-called stars in Flamenco now, they, they don't have a really a serious attitude to understand Paco first, and then they end up doing or very superficial, shallow stuff, or copying him without even knowing, which is even worse, because then when you present this to, to, a, to the qualified audience, and, and then you judge that these are six chords in the same key, with the same speed, the melody, you, if you can put one melody on the other, and one was created in 2002, and one was created in 1976. There is a problem. We have a problem in Houston because this is not that well. Everyone has his own flavor, and actually, this is even no, no, no. Objectively speaking, this chord is C minor, this is A minor, and that's all. This progression was also is also there, and the key is also there. The speed of the thing, and even the style of the stuff. So this is a copy of something. I'm not saying on purpose. Probably most of the time it happens that that uh, one to say no. One is copying, but you see, this is why this is all these examples are of not going beyond the bridge. On the other side, if you listen to Chick Corea, which will be the suite that he composed for Paco, and Paco said, I asked him what is the, the, the recording you like more ever, the only things you have done. I thought he would talk about some of his albums, but he said, uh, My favorite recording is Touchstone Suite, the piece that, that Chick Corea composed for me. And of course, he plays there, along with Carlos Benavent, the, with three Caja players. They were the great Alex Acuña, a, a fantastic studio drummer session from Peru. This is a star of music in LA. He was play, playing, playing Caja. Claudio Oliveira was there, and, and Don Alias, rest in peace, I think, was there. So, three people, Carlos Benavent also, uh, was accompanying Paco with the electric bass. And this is a suite that consists of tientos, tangos, the first part, and then it has some parts at libitum, you know, this, this thing here. Yeah. This is melody. That is also there, that is part of this tientos part and tangos. And then there is the buleria, yellow mimbus, which is, you know, this thing, crazy music. That also we need to know. That is no because Chick Corea, he, he, he really knew and studied Paco actually, being pianist, but he was, <laughs> I know because he said this, he was listening to music and very carefully analyzing everything and trying to duplicate that in the piano. So that is a study, of course, Chick is a genius, right? But he can do this very easily. <laughs> But he did, and he studied the things. He never tried to impose classicism into flamenco or jazz into flamenco. He did this, that music as it is to play acoustically with piano acoustic and, and Paco playing there, which is recorded this in LA with a Barbero 1947 guitar or something, or an authentic one, or a Barbero old with clavijas. That, that's why it has a, a bit of a skin tone, tone, but he liked it because he could play easily. Paco was a bit nervous to play with chicks sometimes. But anyway, that recording there is, is the, is, is the uh, recording project of Paco. And that will be the, ter the third link in the description for you to listen, because that is the example 
of someone who has already passed to the, to, through the bridge of Paco to the other side, Mr. Armando Anthony Chicorea. But he is a pianist. <laughs> he's a composer, of course, he's beyond the instruments, but in fact, he composed this suite for Paco and to play it with him, and he did. But, but in guitar field, we need this information, otherwise we will not grasp that big tip Paco is giving there, saying, I am the bridge between the, the tradition and the future and the modernity. We have to, to, to pay attention to those words and read between words what he means really there. Chick got it, and therefore the result what was? That marvelous music there, marvelous suite, the side one, the, the pivot, these two pieces around 30 minutes or, or so between both of them, uh, procession ceremony and yellow mimbus. Yellow mimbus is a is Bulgarian in, in E flat minor. And I think the tintos are also in E flat minor uh, for many, you know, this uh, the Bulgarian is And yeah, because, and then Paco said Paco was in love with that thing and said, "Man, you know, this is really this is the best thing I have ever recorded." That's how much not envious he was and admiring others' qualities. So uh, very important, very very important. And then if we if we know that, great things are waiting for us as composers. Otherwise, <laughs> we remain stuck in the other side, thinking we are already. Pass through. <laughs> Hopefully not. And I realize this is important stuff to talk about. So thanks also to Eduardo for, for suggesting me to do this video. And I will see you next time. Me ayudó porque descubrí ahí el, la improvisación. La improvisación es algo que yo pienso que cada músico debería, cada músico del estilo que sea, del clásico, del flamenco, de cualquier otra música debería debería aprender porque la improvisación te da mucha libertad y a la vez te da mucho conocimiento de, de dónde estás tocando y cómo estás tocando y qué armonías están en cada momento. ¿no? Muy bien, Pablo. Sí, Paco, ¿qué es para usted la música popular y qué es la música elitista? Yo creo que la música elitista es el refinamiento de la música popular. Por ejemplo, el flamenco. El flamenco originalmente es una música popular, la música del pueblo andalucía. Pero creo que ya no le pertenece más al pueblo, porque de pronto habemos gente que nos hemos pasado toda una vida encerrados puliendo esa expresión popular. Entonces ha llegado a un nivel en el que el, que el pueblo ya no, no, no tiene acceso, sobre todo a los matices que vamos consiguiendo la gente como yo, que nos pasamos muchas horas elaborando esa música.